First, Zack Snyder went back to the Justice League. Now he's going back to zombies. Where is he going to return next? I'm hoping Gahool. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my review of Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead, which is in select theaters this week, some Cinemark theaters and other theaters nationwide, before making its debut on Netflix next week, May 21st. Zack Snyder did a lot of different things with this movie. He is the director, the co-producer, the co-writer, the director of photography. This is a Zack Snyder movie from top to bottom. And I mentioned that it's playing in some theaters nationwide. If there's one near you that's playing Army of the Dead and it's safe for you to do so, I would actually recommend seeing this movie on the big screen because yes, it is going to be seen by most people on Netflix, but this movie has a scope and a scale to it that really lends itself to the cinematic experience. I was surprised actually Actually, when I looked up and saw that this movie was budgeted at a Netflix low, $90 million, because this looks like a movie that may have cost a little bit more than that. When you look at Netflix movies that have cost about the same, movies like Bright, uh, this seems like a much bigger film in scope and scale than Bright was. Of course, one of the things that's the difference between this movie and Bright is that Dave Bautista leads the cast, but you have a lot of smaller names. You don't have to put as much budget into the big Will Smith type names as they did in Bright. The money is up there on the screen, and you can tell because this movie looks really good, the visual effects are really strong, and you don't feel like this is a cheaped out version of the concept. Really, the first 15 minutes of the movie are what the first hour, or really the first entire movie of another franchise would have been. You see how the zombie apocalypse started. You see Las Vegas being completely overrun and all of this culminates in the walling off of the city completely separate from society. As I mentioned, Dave Bautista leads the cast. He plays Scott Ward, a former mercenary who's done his share of zombie fighting already, who is recruited to go back into Las Vegas, which is a huge hot zone, and recover $200 million in a vault underneath a casino before the entire city is going to be nuked by the U.S. government. Ward recruits the kind of team that you would expect to see in a movie like this, like the safe cracker, the helicopter pilot, an assemblage of badasses, the mysterious inside man who has has motives that have yet to be revealed, and Ward's own daughter, who is played by Ella Purnell, who's also inside Vegas looking for a missing friend. Of this ensemble cast, besides Dave Bautista, I think that Amari Hardwick, Tignatero, Matthias Schweighoffer, and Garrett Delahunt do the most to bring these admittedly somewhat stock characters off the page. Tignataro particularly uh, is impressive when you consider that she was brought in to replace a cast member that is already part of the movie. This movie was shot almost two years ago. Her, her entire role was done by compositing her, by shooting her in front of green screen, and in fact, she never even shared a scene with any of the other people in this movie. If you didn't know that this process had happened, you would never know. There are no rough edges, uh, but hats off because that had to have been a very difficult assignment to go in and literally replace a cast member out of the movie. Dave Bautista is really growing as a movie star, and he works here as the anchor for this team. He's been a supporting role in most of the movie roles that he's played. Here, he is the heart of the movie, he drives the plot of the movie, and he handles all of this very well. I'm actually very interested to see what Dave Bautista does going forward, because he's been picking some very interesting roles. He's going to be in the Knives Out sequel that'll be coming to us in the next couple years, and I think that he's just an interesting person to watch. He has transcended the the kind of curve that a lot of people would put him on is like, oh, he's good for a wrestler. Uh, I think that he's just a really, really good actor, and he shows more than just strength in this movie. He shows heart, he shows compassion, he shows fear, he shows a lot of different things, and I think that he is a large reason why this movie works so well. Another big reason, in addition to the fact that, you know, the settings look great, the Las Vegas post-apocalyptic setting looks great, the casinos, the set pieces they shot in some real casinos, that's a great blend with the other ways that they brought Las Vegas to life or afterlife, uh, if you will, uh, in this film. But the zombies themselves also look really good. And there is a great balanced combination of computer gore and practical gore, makeups, really gnarly stuff, viscera, blood, guts, the kinds of things that you see in every great zombie movie and that a lot of great zombie movies now will cheap out on by doing it cartoonishly, by only using the computers. You see some of that in this, but really you see a lot of great makeup effects, not just in the zombie kills, and there are a lot of great zombie kills, there are a lot of great human kills as well, you know what kind of movie this is going in, but there's a lot of great makeups on the zombies themselves. 
And I think that there are going to be some hardcore horror fans that may not go with the ways that Zack Snyder does with the zombies because it's in line with what you know of zombie lore, but it takes some interesting twists and turns. There are a couple of zombies that we get to see uh, more than others, and the makeups on those zombies are really, really well done. So from a visual effects perspective, a makeup perspective, and just a general look perspective, I think that Army of the Dead doesn't feel like it's a cheaped out movie, doesn't feel like it was made for television. This This feels like a real movie, which again is why I would encourage people if they can to see this on the big screen. You don't see the seams, you don't see the flaws, it doesn't seem like it shouldn't be projected there. It almost seems like it shouldn't be on your TV, like everybody should be going to see this in a movie theater, but that's just not the way that the market works right now. Now there are some flaws with this movie. The first one is the length. The movie is about two and a half hours long. and. This is kind of a tradition with Zack Snyder. I think you could have condensed some of this. I don't think that you need the movie to be quite as long as it is, particularly in the first half of the film. They do a really good job of establishing all the characters, but it does take a little while to get going. Having said that, the second half of this movie really cooks. You get the horror elements, you get the action elements, you get the story elements. They all combine really, really well. And you kind of forget, at least I did, some of the qualms you have about the first half because the movie really does pay off. Now, there are a couple things with some of the characters when the movie was over that I kind of sat there going like, wait a minute, I'm not really sure what happened to this character or I don't really know if what happened to this character makes sense. And that'll be stuff for us to process and considering what they're already doing with this, perhaps you're going to learn more about these people in sequels or what happens after this movie is over. So it's not flawless logic looking back, but I will say the second half of the movie is like a great ride and lots of unexpected twists and turns. I really, really enjoyed it. It was enough to to make me forget that I was checking my watch a couple of times during the first part of the movie. When we're talking about theatrically released, Zack Snyder films. For me, and I've been kind of on the record about my feelings about Man of Steel, which is that I really love parts of it, but there's some parts that I'm not a huge fan of. This, to me, is the best Zack Snyder theatrically released film since his first two films, since Dawn of the Dead and since 300. And I think that this movie, Army of the Dead, and his previous remake of Dawn of the Dead now constitute two of the better modern zombie films ever made and may hold their own in the canon uh, regardless of when these movies are made. Zack Snyder is obviously in his element here. He feels comfortable as a filmmaker. It doesn't feel like he's stretching the material uh, to fit his needs or vice versa. This really does feel like a filmmaker that's hitting on all cylinders, that knows where he wants to go, that knows what he wants to show, and shows it in a really engaging way. I think that some people are going to be surprised that there are not a lot of the Zack Snyder-isms that people uh, would expect from this film. This is a real nitty-gritty horror action thriller uh, and it works really well at being what it is and when I look at 2021 if you told me uh, last year or two years before well I, there were a lot of things that I wouldn't have believed if you told me a couple years ago but here we are in 2021 when you combine Zack Snyder's Justice League which I really enjoyed and now Army of the Dead he's two for two in 2021 uh, as far as I'm concerned he's made two films that I really enjoy two films that again are not without their flaws uh, but that on the whole I would recommend and I am I'm recommending Army of the Dead. If you can get to a theater and see it on the big screen, I think it's only playing this week until the premiere on Netflix. So you've got a kind of a short window. Again, if it is safe for you to do so, if you feel comfortable doing so, I would very, very highly recommend seeing Army of the Dead in a big, loud theater. But if you watch it at home and watch it on Netflix, then I think it is definitely worth your time because you've already given Netflix your money. And I think especially if you are a zombie fan, if you're an action fan, if you're a horror fan, I really think you're going to enjoy this movie. Another zombie success story from Zack Snyder. Maybe every 15 or 20 years, we're going to get another great zombie movie. And hey, I love zombie movies, so I would not be upset by that in the least. So that's a recommendation for me on Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead. Are you planning to check it out in theaters? Are you going to wait next week until it comes out on Netflix? Let me know down in the comments below. And stay tuned here on the channel because this is not the last review you're going to see from me in the next couple days. I'm going to be heading out later today to see Spiral from the Book of Saw. We will see if Chris Rock can truly reinvent the horror franchise that has now tried to reinvent itself 
four or five different times. I'm looking forward to doing that. So stay tuned very soon. I will report back on my thoughts on that film and so many other films coming up because we are really hitting a big release cycle. Quiet Place Part 2, Cruella, a lot of things coming down the pipeline that you can watch in a lot of different ways. I will be bringing you my thoughts on as many of those as I can. Thank you so much for watching me here on the channel. If you want to see even more of what I'm doing, you can check me out on Patreon at patreon.com slash Dan Merle. We do a monthly movie club. You get monthly movie commentaries, study sessions, schmodown commentaries, you name it. I'd love to have you come and join us over there. And don't forget the other stuff that we have going on here on the channel, Charts with Dan. We now have a weekly live show where I cover the news and answer your questions in addition to reviews and my podcast, All My Movies. That also comes out weekly. Thanks so much for watching my review of Army of the Dead. I'll see you right back here very soon. Until then, stay safe. Thanks for watching.